Hi, I'm Phil Smith, partner of Cutch and Neal Investment Services, and I'm joined by Mike Cooney, our Senior Investment Advisor from our Sydney office, to talk about the financial markets and what's happened last week. Thanks, Phil. Australia has posted a huge gain of 5.6% for the week, with a big rotation to undervalued shares that have lagged the recovery so far. This has been the banks and the big miners. Global markets have been rallying hard the past week, with particular focus on the US stocks that have climbed 3.2% on the broad-based S&P 500 index, and 2.9% on the traditionally tech-heavy NASDAQ. The weekly trend is that anything that's not nailed down has caught a bid. Phil, what's been happening in the currencies? Thanks, Mike. It's been quite interesting seeing the Aussie dollar rise so dramatically against the US dollar of late. It's reminiscent of the post-GFC days when the Aussie dollar skyrocketed to over one US dollar. Back in the post-GFC days, the strength of the Aussie dollar was driven by interest rate differentials, while this latest rise looks more commodity-driven. Back then, the official cash rate in Australia was around 7.5% and the equivalent US benchmark interest rate was around 3% and falling fast. That difference made the Aussie dollar very attractive and gave it strength which saw it rise so strongly. Now the difference is only 0.25%, so it's not an interest rate differential that's, that's the factor driving the Aussie dollar now. It looks like we're now being driven more and more co highly correlated to the iron ore price. So if the Aussie dollar is now back acting like a commodity currency, it's more than likely the Aussie dollar's fortunes will be more correlated to iron ore and therefore more broadly to economic, uh, economic activity. You'd have to think the recent rise won't be as long lasting as it has been previously, but time will tell. Yeah, that's uh, very interesting, Phil. Um, an example of how desperate um, the world has become to find value, um, investors have been piling into stocks of companies in bankruptcy wagering against a court process that routinely wipes out shareholders. Car renter Hertz Global Holdings that we discussed a few weeks ago is one such company that has seen its shares increase more than tenfold in recent trading sessions, despite being in Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Retail investors might be buying into big names that they recognise without realising that it's very rare for shareholders to get anything back in bankruptcy. People don't know where to put their money. Uh, US, under US, US bankruptcy law, shareholders are last in line for any kind of payout behind the lawyers, lenders, um, and of course, the, the bondholders. Debt securities tied to the companies continue to trade well below par, implying expectations of less than a full recovery for creditors who are ranked well above shareholders. It's interesting, my friend, investors piled into buying uh, the Hertz shares with little reference to the fundamentals of that business. A company loaded with debt, its assets, asset value was declining uh, significantly, being the motor vehicles, and in an environment where people weren't traveling because they were in lockdown. And but yet investors bought into the uh, in, into, into Hertz and the, because they thought they were cheap. And maybe that's being replicated in a number of other stocks in the market as well. Anyway, thanks for joining us today. Um, we'll catch up with you later on.